Hi everyone, welcome to, well, it's only for one member, but you should be here shortly. Welcome to Star Trek Art Department with designers. Yeah, well, yeah. well, yeah, we have, uh, I'm one of those from Trek Yards. Oh, and we have a yeah, There he is. Rick, get up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the rest of our life. Rick, you're back. Rick, Rick, Rick. Where is Tegelon? Hey, you know, it wouldn't be a con if, if somebody was like, 30 seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Carlton's yeah, seconds it wasn't. To my left, how to work out, is Captain Foley from Trek Yards. To his left, is your skip right? Is that what's on your track or something? Yeah, that's not. And then to Rick's left is. Oh. Is. What's that you said? Oh, okay, Roger. <laughs> and his left is. Roger, Roger. Uh, Sean Trump. So, so Rick is Rick was part of the Voyager and Tidge Art Department and DS9 as well. And did some stuff for some movies. He's the he's a true professional in this uh, in this, he's so modest. Uh, Rob worked on the VFX department for Enterprise and Voyager, created a lot of the amazing yeah. VFX that you saw in Voyager and the yeah. Everyone loves Voyager VFX. And the most yeah, the master motion picture. And then to his left, Sean, show what you built. Design. I'm a fan of uh, designed a, a ship for the universe, not the USS Titan Rager ship. Mr. Titan. Mr. Titan. And then he won a full competition. Yes. And got picked. Now he's part of the Trek or part of the Trek family. The Trek designer. Family, yes. And my co Stuart has also designed a ship. I did. I designed the USS Foley class, which is a dreadlock TOS cruiser. Um, yeah. Well, we talk about design first. We'll, we'll, we'll start with Rick, though, because you, you started in the art department. How much fun was it to design Trek? Oh, tons of fun. You know, how, how, could, how, could you not, how could you not have fun like inventing the entire, you know, 24th, 5th, 6th century, you know? Well, we joke that you invented about 20 years of starships. It's a lot of the future design. Yeah, well, you know, in, 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 the, uh, in the next year tech manual, we had a whole timeline. Mm -hmm. The Enterprise D, okay, the Galaxy Class. The Galaxy Class was a 20 year development cycle. So wow. you can tack on for <coughs> 20 years. <laughs> yeah, well, no, all the R&D, yeah. all, all the research and development, you know, testing things. If something blew up, they had to fix it. You know. Going to be my closer to you, Rick. Yeah. Right. Yes, 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 yes. And so it's worth just 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 yeah, pointing so, out some of the classic ships that I mean, Rick, USS Voyager, Deep Space Nine, uh, Enterprise C, and Enterprise, the Prometheus, the Equinox. I could keep going, but those are the most famous ones. Um, is there a favorite on that list of the Federation as well? Well, as far as Starfleet ships go, I, you know, it's got to be a uh, As far as alien ships go, I really had a ball doing the Vorcha, the uh, Klingon attack cruiser. Um, and, uh, you know, Doug Lennon, you know, General Martok really should have picked that as his flagship, but no, he goes with the, like, the little bird of prey. A scout <laughs> ship, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But he got the job done. Absolutely. He got the job done. So in TNG, they, they brought in a new, uh, new class of ship, you know, Garawan's flagship. Um, what was, do you remember what was in the, the script for describing this next thing on ship? So one in the uh, TOS, one in the motion picture, refitted the prey. What was the notes about this new, bigger, badder ship? You know, I, I don't remember what was in the script itself, but, uh, you know, generally there would be, uh, you know, a, a description of the ship. We'd uh, talk with the producers a little bit about, uh, okay, guys, what is the scale of this thing? And most of the time, most of the time, the ships had to be three quarters or so the length of the Gauss class, okay, because nothing was bigger and badder than Picard's Enterprise. Uh, so the Vorcha class was about, you know, 75% the length, uh, well, whatever, you know, 75% of 2,108 feet. Um, and uh, uh, the Enterprise C, the Enterprise C had to be about three quarters of the length. You know, because they wanted to make a point that, uh, you know, Picard's ship was, you know, the flagship and nothing, nothing could touch it. 
Except it brought me a little more bird. Yeah. <laughs> which, which was bigger. Yeah. Way bigger, yeah. It's classic. So you scared. Yeah, he's been like, You design so many ships. Is there a specific ship? We'll take up Morgan GSI because they have the longer development cycle. Yeah. Was there a specific ship that you remember being a pain in the ass? Just took a lot longer to do. Not really, you know. Um, I, I I was very very fortunate with the franchise that uh, uh, yes, there there would be you know approvals and rejections of certain sketches and, and uh, you know changes to things. Uh, yeah. You know, but most of the ships, I would say, you know, 90% of the stuff that, uh, that I did sailed through the, the approvals process. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe a couple of ships got rejected outright and they went with either an existing model or a CGI uh, a thing that, that was already, you know, in hand. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they paid us as much to erase as to draw. Uh, and we just, you know, we just kept it going. We kept, the, you know, we kept everything moving. Now, one thing that's about this panel is that everyone's flown here from different parts of the world. We have the design of the Equinox and the sort of redesign of the Rhode Island, the Refit. And that's one ship that, that Rob did. So, Rob, tell us about Rhode Island and then Rick. What do you think about Rhode Island? No, oh, I love it. I love it. I thought it'd be hard to be more fun. Tell us. Tell us more. Uh, I'm going to come up. Oh, yeah, it was in the final, the final episode of uh, Voyager, and there was a, if you remember seeing it or whatever, there was a lot of things going on in that. A lot of, a lot of shifts, a lot of, a lot of effects to a lot of new work stuff. And, you know, we had to pull in, like, you know, double the crew and everything to be able to even attempt to finish that those two episodes and two other episode on, you know, on that time. Just like Starfleet. Just like Starfleet. Mm -hmm. And when they came to Harry Kim's ship, it was kind of like the only ship where they just said, you know, where Berman and, and Broadway just said, just use the Equinox or something like, I don't care, we're not, we're not going to make a new ship for him. And, <laughs> and so, it's uh, just uh, it's kind of it was kind of was said to me, you know, you know, just a money thing, you know, they, don't, they didn't want to, and it would have meant something, I would have had to pull somebody off and they would have had to build, a, you know, this model for from scratch, which would have you know, probably taken two, three weeks of where I don't need, you know, I didn't need to lose a model for that long. But I didn't like the idea of just using, like, you know, a ship that's already been used and, you know, and just not doing it over the money and being the dumb, ridiculous, perfect fan that I am, or especially ship fan, I just asked. Supervisor, if I had my uh, the guy I can, like I worked with in the art department, which was Mitch Justin, and I said, Mitch, can I find a way to redesign a ship or to do a ship for Harry Kim and like maybe take the Equinox and, and modify it? Do you think they'll care? I mean, I'll do it for free. I just did it for free. I just did it on my own time. So I came on the weekends, or if I stayed late, you know, I stayed a little later. And ultimately, I didn't have time to. I could only do the top. I only had time to do the paint I wanted on the top, because the bottom stayed pretty much the same. Well, but you only saw it in three shots, and you pretty much only saw it by the top, but I had to do that on purpose. But, you know, <laughs> do do that. Do so, okay. like Sorry. Two of us. I liked it. Okay, well, then, there's something. So there are two professionals in the middle, and then we've got two more fans of turn professional. But yeah. let's start with Sean. What makes a good TNG era design? What are the basic building blocks? Because you built the type of the uh, uh, For me, it, it was stability. Um, especially, I, when I designed the Titan, I had to bring it in between Enterprise Deep and Voyager. And the contest rules really specifically said what, what it had to be, <laughs> be between. And the fact that they mothballed it. So I had to then refigure out what kind of stuff would have been upgraded uh, by the time that boy, uh, Titan got uh, put together, so I had to figure out what parts of all the ships I ever loved as a kid would uh, be incorporated into the design. So, I, for me, you had to have a good, strong uh, command deck, the saucers, and you had to have a good uh, set of, uh, of course, going back, because going back to the original Enterprise, you had a good set of the cells. 
So you had to have just those, the, the, the starting point go from there. What makes the TNG aesthetic unique? It's, to me, it's more detailed. The more detailing and the light, uh, especially like if you look at the, the nacelles, they had so much more stuff going on in the, uh, the engine, the warp, the warp core and the warp the nacelles, you had so much stuff going on. You could just look at one thing. And you're always looking, oh, what, what do they do here? What, what's going on in this part of the ship? So it's, <laughs> that's why I would watch Voyager when it was on. I was always interested when I would do uh, passes and you see little things going on inside the windows. And that's what made it for me, it, was, it wasn't just a ship. It was a, to me, it, they, it was a line. So. And then the student, uh, TOS Dreadnought. Now, what is the TOS Dreadnought? Well, it's a three nacelle ship. Which, so there's three nacelle ships? Yes. Well, according to some people, some people say no, but... So what makes a good TOS hero design? Uh, simplicity, I think. Clean lines, um, not too greedily or cluttered up, uh, and uh, yeah, very crisp, clean look. And TOS is the most iconic hero. So how did it feel trying to redesign something in such an iconic hero? So the fans of the show and fans of Apple will judge your design. Uh, fairly easy to be honest. I mean, it's a nice, it's an easy aesthetic to put together, and I incorporated some things from the refit uh, Enterprise kind of as a step towards that design. Uh, the ball turret, phasers, the impulse crystals, uh, things like that. So, kind of a, a step between TOS and the motion picture. Well, speaking of fan reaction, Sean, give us the best compliment you've ever had and the worst insult. Because there's such a range of fans on that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong idea. Well, do you want to come back to you in the last break about the Voyager? But if you can just come out, yes. Did you have something to say? Well, worst uh, compliment is why did you make the Nacelle so damn big? <laughs> and, I, and I didn't really have a good answer to it. I thought when I was designing a 2D, I didn't think they were that big. When you see it in 3D, you're like, whoa. <laughs> uh, best compliment, it fits into the fleet. Sequest, 
and they were already they already had the Voyager there, and they weren't doing they weren't doing like a, a ton of shots. It was like the the test. It's like they were basically asking M imaging to like do the best that they could, and they had the ship scanned, and, and you know they didn't, no one built the mesh. It was scanned, and the, the textures were the pictures taken off the actual physical model, and then you know put onto it. And uh, and they just started doing a shot here, a shot there, you know, like not a whole episode of the CG ship. And slowly it just became more and more and started to look as the, as the software got better the, and the computers got more memory and chips got faster. You could do better lighting and everything and all of a sudden it just, it's very, you know, very slowly but very quickly the motion control was gone. It was just like boom, all of a sudden we were all CG and that was it. And then you know? Voyager ended, um, but you actually went back to work on the Voyager model. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I just made it through my own. How, how much did you improve it? What sort of, like, how much of a face did you improve it? Well, I improved it, I just, I just, I basically, like around the docking ports, I, you know, I put lights, like, the, the way it had been done before, and on the physical model, there was no docking ports around the lights. Like, if you remember Star Trek Motion Picture, you know, and the travel pods look up, you know, the lights come on and things happen, so I said, well, it's got three of them, and, you know, it just wasn't there, so I added that. Yeah, well, a lot of that stuff, a lot of the details he's describing were actually in the original sketches that were provided to uh, Tony Meyer's uh, model makers. Uh, but, you know, they could not wire up every single thing. Uh, and if you remember the, uh, the there's a, there's a, a sort of a, a lounge at the very, very tail of the ship. Yeah. And, they, and Tony's guys could not light that because there were gears and motors for the, for the pylons. Uh, that got in the way, uh, so you can tell the CG version of the ship, the lounge lights are on. Yeah, that's, how you, that's really, that's how you, that's one way to know. Right? I never really knew that until now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've forgotten about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, when, when, when we built a ship like Voyager, uh, you know, they, they did a lot of what we call library shots. So, you know, a lot of the cruising shots that you see week after week, um, and, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, any, any time you had a ship that was model only, you couldn't do a whole lot of stuff to it to damage it, to make it look hardly, you know, broken and bent and destroyed and uh, uh, like that. So that's why Voyager was just perfect the whole time. Oh, yeah, yeah. they damaged it up a little bit. Yeah. 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 But, 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 you know, we've got guys out there and they fix it real fast. Yeah. Between the episode. That's what Pat T. himself fixed it. Yeah. But then, but so it's safe to assume that uh, the uh, year of Hell Voyager was CG. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can tell. I don't know. Oh, yeah. By, by the time the year of Hell came up, I was doing, you know, drawings of big gouges in the, in the hull, and you could see all the decks in there with, you know, little, little things flying around. Yeah. Well, I just have a question, but my my uh, my dad has asked a question to uh, to Rick about it before. Rick, um, Star Trek Voyager. Yeah. They only have a few photon torpedoes, yet they fire way, 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 way more. How do they photon torpedoes? Well, they get they get yeah, they get replicators. Yeah, they get Exactly what he said. They got replicators. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you, you take a, you take your your typical uh, you know alien asteroid field, and you got all the raw materials you're ever gonna want. Um, as long as you've got some antimatter to help juice the system, you know, you'll be fine. And, and you know, Janeway was always trading for antimatter and that sort of stuff. Uh, the only thing that we, we cautioned the writers not to replicate easily were warp coils. Uh, but they went and made a whole bunch of shuttles anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> and I told, I told Jerry Taylor, one of our producers, I told her, like, you know, Voyager probably left dry dock with like stacks of warp coils like they were new tires. <laughs> That's what I yeah. You put one spare one in there. Okay. That's yeah. the only ship that has a spare one. Oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, we also have a spare warp coil. Yeah, there's a spare warp coil in Voyager. That, I mean, That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and the writers have ignored it. You can see it if you look at the... No, they didn't ignore it. Because they, 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 they had to eject the warp coils. No, they eject they injected the main core, yeah, but they didn't talk about they no, didn't talk they about talk the fact that 
Uh, we have a spare. It will only take about 12 hours to install. <laughs> they didn't talk about it, but they had to use the spare at that point. Try to tell us the show about ships. Yeah, you, know that. Know. you see how crazy we got about this stuff? <laughs> so really, that comes an issue, not a continuity issue with this film. 